Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and we're back to Trappist, but this time we're actually going to be talking about a topic that hasn't really been mentioned by many sources just yet, and specifically, I wanted to talk about Trappist as a potentially smallest star we've ever discovered. Now, is it or is it not? You're going to find out in this video. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So let's actually escape the Trappist system about which we're not really going to be talking in a lot of detail today and talk about another system that has also been discovered only a few years ago back in I believe 2014. Um, the system that doesn't actually have a really cool name like Trappist. The system by the name of 2 mass J0523-1403. Now just before we leave though, let's take a look at Trappist again and uh, just notice its diameter. It's 162,000 kilometers. So uh, the average radius of Trappist, that's the radius from the center to the edge of this sphere, um, is approximately um, 79,400 kilometers. That's essentially the size of this uh, beautiful star. And that's also very close to the size of Jupiter. But let's move on, go to the next system. We're going to the system known as 2 mass J0523-1403. If you type that in Space Engine, you will find it right away. And this is the system that I'm currently in. Now, what is interesting about this particular system? And that's, of course, the fact that that has potentially the smallest star in the universe. Now, how do we know that? Well, let's talk a little bit about science here. This star is just over 120,000 kilometers in diameter. It's um, about 30% or so smaller than uh, TRAPPIST-1. And the reason we think that this is actually a small star is that um, this is actually a star of the lowest possible limit of mass when an object can start an actual nuclear reaction on the inside, which is what we would define a main sequence star as. So anything below this mass and you would create what's known as a brown dwarf. Now let me show you what a typical brown dwarf looks like. And I guess the one that's the easiest to find is... Laman 16, which is right here. And this should look like a brown dwarf. It's actually a brown dwarf binary even. And you'll see that as soon as I approach it, it's going to look uh, very, very different from the star you just saw a few seconds ago. So this is a much darker object. It's a lot more Jupiter-like because this is technically an overgrown gas giant with a mass of like 57 Jupiters. Whereas uh, the star you just saw a few seconds ago is a little bit more massive, but also a little bit larger as well. So the thing about brown dwarf is that the more massive they become, the more small they become. So this is actually almost half the size of the star that, we, that you just witnessed. So let's go back there for a second and talk about why we think that this is possibly the smallest, one of the smallest in the universe and maybe even the smallest in our galaxy. So mathematically, this particular red dwarf meets the minimal requirement for the minimal mass re uh, needed for a nuclear reaction. And this is the smallest we've discovered. This is also one of the smallest we'll probably ever find because they're so hard to see and because they're so, so difficult to detect. Now, in this particular game, it does have planets around it, and it's very likely just um, it's very likely that in real life, just like Trappist One, this object will have quite a lot of Earth-like objects, Earth-like planets orbiting around it. Now, in Space Engine, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine planets around it. It has nine um, very interesting, very unusual-looking, but very beautiful-looking planets. All of them very, very cold. This one is super cold and super dark. Let's actually come and visit it for a second. Uh, but interestingly, um, all of the models we've used to try to see if uh, these stars would have planets indicated to us that it's very likely that every single red dwarf in the galaxy might actually possess these very beautiful... Um, Earth-like but relatively cold planets that uh, might all be tidally locked to the parent star. Now this is the closest one and the temperature here is still very cold, it's about minus 153 degrees Celsius. But it's a relatively beautiful looking planet that you're about to see. It's a cold Selena with very very beautiful um, 
looking terrain once you actually land on it. And so here we go, there's all these mountain ranges and all these beautiful looking hills and everything. And of course, the star in the sky is right there. And as you can see, this particular planet is tidally locked, so this side will always be facing the star. So, let's actually go to um, Universe Sandbox for a second and compare all of these smallest stars that we've discovered, most of them red dwarfs, to um, Trappist-1 and to, of course, this one here, known as Tumas J0523-1403. So... Here we are in Universe Sandbox and we're going to start by placing Trappist-1 right here and just making sure that its radius is correct. Alright, 79,000 kilometers. Perfect. Next on the list is going to be the smallest star, which is not actually available to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to cheat a little bit and uh, we're going to place another Trappist here and then modify its size to 60,000 kilometers radius so you'll notice that it's going to decrease a little bit it's going to decrease in both in mass and size and it's also going to lose a little bit of its surface temperature this temperature here is actually just over 1800 degrees celsius and so now i renamed this star to 2 mass j0523 also known as the smallest star and if i were to go into charts I can now compare these two side by side and you'll see that it's just a little bit smaller than uh, Trappist-1 and it's a little bit dimmer than Trappist-1 as well. In other words, Trappist-1 is actually a pretty small star, so it's quite surprising that we were able to find it to begin with. Now let's place a few more stars here just so you can actually see the comparison uh, of these objects and let's start with something that is uh, a little bit uh, well known to us, so here we're going to be placing Barnard Star. Barnard Star is actually one of the closest red dwarfs to us and it's very very well known because it's one of the first red uh, dwarfs ever discovered so we're going to place it a little bit farther away and uh, this particular star is actually a lot larger as you'll see it's uh, close to about 136,000 um, kilometers in radius and uh, is a lot brighter as well. Uh, next on the list is Another very well-known uh, red dwarf, and this is the closest red dwarf to us. And this is uh, the closest star to us to begin with, Proxima Centauri, that has a planet Proxima B around it. So let's actually place Proxima Centauri, and just for fun, let's place Proxima B here as well, and compare sizes again. So, Barnard Star, Proxima Centauri, Trappist uh, is right here, this is the smallest star. And there is Proxima B, which is actually, um, as you can see, not very large compared to the smallest star that we've discovered. All right. Next on the list is, let's actually place Jupiter. So you can actually see how small these um, stars actually are in comparison to our own Jupiter. And so here is Jupiter in comparison to these other stars. And as you can see, it's actually relatively big. It's bigger than the smallest star we've discovered, but it's a little bit smaller than Trappist-1, Barnard Star, and uh, Proxima Centauri. So Jupiter is a very large planet, but it's also not as dense as them. So its mass is like close to about 80 times to maybe 90 times smaller than uh, Trappist-1, for example. Anyway, let's place some more objects here. But this time we're going to place stars that are considered to be uh, expired or dead, I guess. The most famous of these stars is Sirius B. This is a white dwarf that we're going to place here just for the size comparison. I'm going to place it right there. And we're also going to place um, another expired star. Specifically a pulsar, and let's actually just place crap pulsar right here, just once again for the size comparison. So these are obviously going to be much, much, much smaller, but they're not really considered to be main sequence stars anymore because they have outlived their main sequence stage and have now become very, very, very small. So there is Series B. It's just a little bit smaller than Proxima B. In other words, it's about size of Earth. But it's comparable in size to the smallest star once again. But obviously this is a lot, a lot more massive than this and also a lot more dense. And if I were to zoom in somewhere right over here, we'll discover a tiny, tiny pulsar by the name of Crab Pulsar. There it is. It's ridiculously small. 
very minuscule, and it's, uh, it's only about 11.5 kilometers in radius. So in comparison to these other stars, it is very, very small. But we're not actually interested in these particular stars because, like I said, they're not main sequence anymore. So we're going to actually just erase them from here for a second and focus on the actual main sequence stars that we have here. So once again, this star that still has no name but really should have one because it's the smallest and at least it holds that record, uh, is definitely something that we need to explore a little bit more and possibly point the same telescope known as Trappist Telescope at this star next because we, we want to see if uh, we discover those Earth-like planets here as well. And if we discover them here, we'll be able to discover them around pretty much every red dwarf that we uh, know currently. Interestingly, however, uh, we haven't really discovered any planets around Bernard Star, but maybe we just haven't really looked hard enough. Anyway, so hopefully now you've learned a little bit more about the sizes of stars, and now you know a little bit more about the smallest star. If you have a really cool name that we can give the star one day, please post it in the comments below. Other than that, let's actually start the simulation here, and let's see what happens to these stars as they basically start colliding with each other. There we go. Look at that. That's crazy. I don't even know what's happening anymore. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't and consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Also, share this video with someone who enjoys watching these videos and who likes to learn through various video games. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something really, really cool, something different and something really interesting. Space out. See you later. Let's see what happens to these beautiful objects as they collide with each other or as they basically spin in a very different, very unusual way. See you later. Bye-bye.